is 736 right now. Well, as news of the spread of coronavirus dominates the national conversation, we should remember that little ears are listening. That's right. Children listen to everything, ask mm -hmm. a lot of questions, and many parents are reporting that their children are sadly afraid. Clinical neuropsychologist and co-host of The Doctors, Dr. Judy Ho, joins us this morning to talk about what we should do as parents to discuss the topic but not to cause them to have fear. Good morning to you. Good morning, Roxy. Good morning, Tony. I hope you and your families are staying healthy and safe. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate doing our that. Best. We're definitely <laughs> doing our best. You know, Kids really do pick up on, on how they're, even though we don't think that they're as smart as they are, they really pick up on everything. You don't even have to tell them things. They can feel them. They sense them. Absolutely. As you just mentioned, Tony, kids are always learning. And so we do have to check our own emotions. Obviously, we're stressed as well. And I think it's okay to be honest that, hey, mommy and daddy are stressed. But it's also important to know that you need to be able to put the measures in place and to always be trying your best to demonstrate good behaviors and good coping skills, even when we do feel anxious. So what are some of the tips you have for parents out there? A few uh, very important tips is try to reassure your children that you are doing your best to keep them safe. Obviously, you can't guarantee them an outcome, but you are doing your very best. And also match the information you give them with their developmental age and stage, because oftentimes you speak too much in the abstract for a younger child and it goes over their heads. For younger children, it's most important to demonstrate the practical tips, like what is proper hand washing? What is good social distancing? Actually role play those elements for them. With the older children, you actually can talk a little bit more in abstract and give them a bit more information. But I also think that it's important for them to have good news literacy skills. So don't let them be on the news, on an iPad all day long. Limit their time of exposure and make sure that they're touching base with good news sources like yourselves, as opposed to just going down social media as a route because there is good but also poor information on social media. Yeah, it's really amazing. Um, my daughter, for example, she's almost four, but she'll say things like, can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm like, no, not yet. Yeah. And she goes, no, 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 when the sickness is over. Mm. So the fact that she's comprehending this and understanding it is just and again, amazing. She's four. Almost four, not yeah. even four. So, so Dr. Dr. Ho, what about scheduling things with your kids? Because as, as Araksha pointed out, you can't really go anywhere or do much. That's right. And so to keep your children still engaged, I recommend that they are scheduled every day, still have certain wait times and sleep times and also have certain activities that they will be scheduling every single day. So learning activities, leisure activities, things that promote self care and also things that teach responsibility. I recommend that in every single day, you schedule something in at least four of these domains. And one of the things that I really love is this app. It's called Color Quest. It's the number one app for education in 24 countries and what's great about it is it's a coloring app that teaches you health facts and things that children can practically take to protect themselves and to learn more about their bodies and the way they function and so if you have that quick video you can show it on the screen but basically color quest is amazing because children can actually engage with their environment with whatever that they've colored so they can choose one of 70 plus characters and then once they've colored it in they can actually show it um, in their actual environment they can point with the camera and be able to have fun with it in their own house and i think that we do have to come up with these creative ways to engage our children and to utilize screen time in the most proactive and educational way possible but i really suggest that parents keep your children on a schedule to the best of your ability maybe schedule things in 30 minute or one hour blocks and encourage them to do one of these four activities every day learning leisure self-care and responsibility activities uh, and by responsibility she means chores right <laughs> no you know what getting them involved is very helpful like hey let's help me cook dinner yeah, help me sure. do the laundry they like that kind of stuff they really do so take advantage while they like it <laughs> that's the exactly. takeaway so shared experiences as much as possible even shared screen time so if you're going to do screen time do it with them and do it with educational tools yeah and Makes do really really well with structure as we know so we actually at home just made one of these scheduling boards we'll see how it goes yeah. but you know reading time music time play time that sort of thing and so you got to do what you got to do and I know a lot of parents out there are feeling this they ha had no expectation of having to become homeschool teachers but this is what the situation we're in now thank, thank you so much really appreciate you. seeing you as always great information thank you, guys. Thank you.